Do you know how much important your information is? Big tech giants like Google and Facebook are readily selling your information every single day. Information disclosure also comes in bug bounty. If you find this vulnerability in any website, you can be paid a huge bounty for it. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you how you can exploit as well as protect any website from this vulnerability. Let's get started. Before starting, let's look at what information disclosure is. Information disclosure is when a user in a website is able to access of information that he or she is not supposed to. Some information in the website is only restricted to the admin, like the user information who are using the website. So this information, if it is lead to any of the user, it's called information disclosure. To understand this, we'll be using two labs of Portswigger uh, labs. If you don't have an account, just go sign up. I'll leave the link in the description below. This is the first lab, source code disclosure via backup files. And this is the second lab, information disclosure in error messages. First, let's solve uh, source code disclosure via backup files. So the lab says this lab leaks source code via backup files in a hidden directory. To solve this lab, identify and submit the database password, which is hard coded in the leaked source code. So we got to know that there's some leaked source code and we just have to find that leaked source code. Whenever you are doing bug bounty or you're performing a pen test, always when you're in a website, first search robots.txt file because that file is always there in every website and sometimes it leaks some information and it is the easiest way for information disclosure. You go to robots.txt and there we found that the website is not allowing us to go on the backup file. So we have robots.txt here. We can just go on the backup file. We press enter. And here we see there is one file in product template.java.bak. Once I press on that, we get some source code. Here, as you can see, if you know a bit of Java, you would know that connection builder is used to connect two identities together. So there is one database and there is one front end in a website. The database is containing all the useful information of the website and the front end is containing what you see. So the connection builder is building a connection between the front end and the database of the website. Here, the database is PostgreSQL and this database is having a password and this is the password right here. So basically the source code is leaking the password and we are getting it through robots.txt. So this is an information disclosure vulnerability. If you just copy this and you can just go back on the home page, submit solution. If you page the solution, you have solved the lab. So this is a very basic and a very important vulnerability that you can exploit via just accessing a file that is named robots.txt. If you go on any website and on the internet, you will find a robots.txt file, but most of the robots.txt files don't contain that much useful information of it. Next, we have information disclosure in error messages. What this lab does, if you provide any value that the website is not expecting, if the website is expecting a numerical value and you provide an alphabetical value, it'll come back with an error message to you. And in some cases, if the website has a vulnerability, it'll come with the error message. It'll disclose some information in that same error message. So if I go and access this lab, we would be needing burp speed for this lab. And burp speed is a tool from Portsburger Academy or the Web Security Academy. We will be doing this lab with the community edition. If you want to download it, I'll leave the link in the description below. It's a very useful tool and it'll help you a lot in uh, web hacking. So once you are on this website, Let's read the lab, what it says. So the lab says this lab's verbose error messages reveal that it's using a vulnerable version of a third party framework to solve this lab, obtain and submit the version number of this framework. So for this, you copy this and I will go on my, yeah. So this is my burp suite running right here. And this is the burp suite browser. If I press enter here, I will just turn on the proxy and then I will view any product here. So there are number of products here. I, let me view any product here. If I click on view, it'll show me in the proxy. And as you can see, we are getting a get request. There are two types of requests. Mainly there are many types of requests, but mainly there are only two types of requests in the HTTP library. One is get and the other one is post. The get request requests some information from the database and the post request actually is providing some information to the database. And also it gets a reply for that. So the website is asking for product with the product IT one 
and it's a get request so it's asking that from the database so let's say let's forward this packet so as you can see we got that product if we reload this page let me forward this if we reload this page we'll again get the same thing and in this case when we do product id 2 then it will show me the second product let me forward it as you can see we got the second product and the database is only expecting a numerical value right here in product id if i provide it with an alphabetical value let's say example and i press forward as you can see we got an error message and this error message discloses information this is a java this is a this is an error message and it is telling me some code in java and as you can see we got apache the apache server running on this website so there are many vulnerabilities coming out of apache servers every time one new version is released you can get that from the internet and this is a huge vulnerability this is a huge information disclosure vulnerability as you can see we got the version of which version which version of apache or which hosting actually this website is running on if i copy this i'll just turn off the intercept and i'll go back to my home page if i go on summit solution i can just paste what i got and the lab would be solved so these are the two most basic kind of information gathering techniques or information disclosure vulnerabilities if you're doing a pen test or you're doing a bug bounty program Web Security Academy is a great tool and uh, it is hosted by Postfigure. It's a great tool for learning web. I will be doing some more vulnerabilities in the, in the next videos so that you can get better at bug bounty and penetration testing. This is basically called web hacking also. So it falls in the category of ethical hacking too. If you want to practice information disclosure more, you can just type Postfigure information disclosure in the net and you will get thousands of links for the labs to the Postfigure library. In the next video, we are going to be doing a lot of Portswigger labs and we are going to be discussing multiple vulnerabilities like the cross-site scripting, SQL injection and much much more. Stay tuned in and I'll catch you guys next time.